Last season there were 18 different managers sacked in the championship and in today's video we're going to do our best to predict which managers will still be at their club come the end of the season. I'd love to hear your guys' perspectives on this one down below. Now obviously all of this is guesswork. We're trying to predict which manager is going to have a bad run of form at some points of the season and ultimately face the chart. And at the end of the day it's just for a little bit of fun and this will be a video that we can come back to at the end of the season and see how many I was right about and you in the comments down below as well. So this is the tier list we're going to be chucking each of the managers into. He'll be gone, could be gone, should be fine, still in a job or part of the furniture. Your manager at your championship club, which tier would you put them in? We'll start out with someone who's part of the furniture, Mark Robbins. I will be absolutely astonished if he's nil, if he's not still the Coventry boss come the end of the season. I think something would have to go disastrously wrong for there even to be a conversation over his future. The groundwork he's put in place at Coventry over these last few years has been absolutely fabulous and while he has set a high bar for himself in terms of last season's playoff finish I think there is an overall understanding at Coventry that this could be a little bit of a transitional season with the massive influx of players coming in and the two big hitters going out as well I still think Coventry will be up and around the playoff picture though and regardless of what happens this season I just can't fathom a world where they'd even consider sacking Mark Robbins. Alex Neal in at Stoke I reckon he'll still be in the job come the end of the season I think that Stoke and the board there have given Neil a lot of backing this summer. It is going to be a bit of a transitional season. And as we've seen with Stoke managing in the past, the board there really are quite patient with giving them a lot of time and even if things do start to go wrong for Neil I think he will be given that time to go ahead and turn things around overall it's been a positive start for Stoke though in these first three matches and come the end of the season I still expect Neil to be in a job. Russ Martin in at Southampton I'm going to chuck him into the should be fine category there's a massive expectation on each of the three clubs coming down from the Premier League this season and with expectation does come a little bit of uncertainty with the manager you know, if Southampton aren't in and around the top two with a few months to go, maybe they would go ahead and make that change from Martin. But I think he's done well to navigate a fairly difficult transfer window so far with players leaving, players coming in. I'm sure there'll be plenty more movement between now and the end of the window. I have a feeling he will still be in post as Southampton boss come the end of the season but you never really know with these relegated clubs with the expectations that are there but I think how much they've bought into the Russell Martin brand they'd probably be quite foolish to get rid of him. A manager that could be gone I'm going to say Errol Balut maybe just because I still think there's a little bit of uncertainty with Cardiff in general they had a massive overturn of managers last season three different managers in post at Cardiff throughout different points of the season Balut's come in and while I have been some promising signs early on yet to pick up a win in their first three matches and just overall the running of that club on a day-to-day -day basis can be a little bit sporadic and with that comes the uncertainty over a manager especially a new one into the championship like below who am I going to put my neck on the line and say they will be gone come the end of the season I think I've got to chuck Gareth Ainsworth into that category I know that QPR have had an upturn in performance over those last couple of matches and um, sort of bouncing back from that disastrous opening day they had against Watford but stacking up Ainsworth and his record at championship level compared to pretty much everyone else on this list Ainsworth does stick out and um, at the bottom in terms of points per game what is accumulated less than one point per game he's averaging at QPR let's not forget based on the results last season coming into this season QPR another club who did have a big overturn of managers last season as well obviously with Beal leaving Critchley came in he wasn't given that long after he got off to a bad start and then Ainsworth came in towards the back end of the season just feel like if QPR are still in and around the bottom three with a few months to go Ainsworth will be sacked. Disco Munoz in at Sheffield Wednesday the only championship club yet to pick up a point this season and I have to admit I'd be pretty surprised if he was still the Sheffield Wednesday manager come the end of the season. I get he's walking into a really tough job there where recruitment wise he's a little bit behind every other championship club he was obviously only given the job with a few weeks to go until the championship season got underway so he is playing catch up with a lot of other sides but the early signs from Wednesday 
haven't been that promising in terms of what Zisco is trying to do compared to the players he's currently got at his disposal. I'm not sure that's the best fit at this point in time. And throughout his managerial career, he's only tended to stick around in places for a short spell of time. And so can I see him seeing out a full championship season with Sheffield Wednesday with how chaotic they can be behind the scenes? Not sure I see it at this point. Stephen Schumacher in at Plymouth Argyle. I think he'll still be in a job come the end of this season at Plymouth. The only way I could realistically see Schumacher not still being at Plymouth would be if another championship club from maybe further up the food chain came in for him and poached him away from his job at Plymouth. But as things stand, I'd be amazed if they were to even consider getting rid of him. Their miraculous work he did with that squad in League One last season already been a fantastic start for them in the championship this season, showing how competitive they will be. And even if they do go on a dodgy run of form and end up in and around the bottom region of the table, I think the board there will still have more than enough faith in him to ride out those rocky patches. I think it's a very similar similar occurrence with Kira McKenna in at Ipswich as well, going to put him into this still in the job category. Only reason I could see McKenna not being at Ipswich is very similar circumstances to Schumacher where maybe a club from higher up the food chain, maybe a Premier League club was to look at him um, and poach him away from Ipswich but other than that I can't see a world where Ipswich would really get rid of him. Get the expectations have risen you know, quite rapidly at Ipswich but I think that McKenna's gone along with that. Um, he's delivering on all fronts right now. I think he'll still be in a job come the end of the season. Matt Taylor in at Rotherham did a good job with the Millers last season to keep them up in the championship. Can he go ahead and progress them this season? My only doubt with Taylor is the fact that I do see Rotherham being in a relegation scrap this season and if they're in the bottom three with a month or two to go, do the board go ahead and twitch at that point, make a decision and try to get an impact manager in for the final few matches of the season. That's the only doubt I have with him right now. You can see he's trying to evolve this Rotherham side, get them playing a little bit more football. With that being said, he is a manager who I think could be gone come the end of the season if the Millers are in that bottom three. But in, in, yeah, there are thereabouts with him right now, really. Michael Carrick in at Middlesbrough. Now, at the start of the season, I would have unquestionably said still on the job. But for the time being, I'm going to say Carrick should be fine. It's not been a great start to the season for Middlesbrough. I think the expectations there are to be in that playoff chase again. And so far, they have fallen below par. Winless in their first three matches finally got their first point on the board against Huddersfield and I mean quite a bit still needs to be done in the transfer market to get that Middlesbrough squad onto the level it was last season. You can see what Carrick's trying to do right now but not quite got all the components to go ahead and pull it off. I think he should be fine but as Middlesbrough showed last season with Chris Wilder, if they are in and around the bottom of the table, they won't be afraid to make that switch. But I do back his managerial talent to turn things around from what's been a pretty under-par start so far. Tony Mowbray in at Sunderland is a really interesting one because there were some exit rumours that started to pop up in the summer that Mowbray maybe isn't seen as that long-term boss for this Sunderland project. But he defied all odds last season by getting Sunderland into the top six. And I suppose that could be seen as a double-edged sword really because on one hand it was a fantastic achievement but also has that set the bar too high for Sunderland this season it's a very young squad he's working with right now we've already had a few rumblings that behind the scenes maybe Sunderland are looking into different managers I rate Mowbray really quite highly I think he's done a marvellous job with this Sunderland squad so far and obviously the youthful recruitment policy that they've gone along with with that being said just with a little bit of uncertainty in the summer he is someone who maybe could be gone come the end of this season as Sunderland maybe look towards a new long-term coach at some point but yeah that, that'll be one to keep your eye on I feel like over the next few weeks and months. Enzo Maresca next. Ah, oh, this one's a really difficult one because it's such a small sample size of matches that we're judging him by and he could be a manager who just continues to win with this Leicester squad, gets them promoted at the first time of asking and from that perspective he'll absolutely still be in a job. With that being said, the performances of Leicester so far despite winning all their matches haven't quite been all that and the expectations at Leicester are to be promoted at the first time of asking. I don't think that anything else will do for Leicester. I think that even if they were to finish 
in the playoffs but outside the top two that would be an underachievement and with expectations that high and still a few bits not falling into place Maresca is a manager who perhaps could be gone if Leicester do go on a bit of a dodgy run and don't look like they'll hit those required standards but it's a really difficult one to say because he's won all three of his opening matches so far he is one that I'm sort of all over the place with right now I do still think there's a chance that Leicester make a change if Maresca isn't living up to those high expectations I think that maybe he will grow into this season with this Leicester squad that is still very early days and results wise he's had a good start but just because of the expectations at Leicester and the fact that they don't look as fluid as possible right now, he is someone who maybe could be in line for a shock departure at some point. And this is the championship after all. Michael Duff in at Swansea. I'm going to say he should be fine. Obviously, a new addition coming into the championship this summer. It's tough to make a definitive statement on a manager with not having that much of a track record at the club he is at right now, obviously. Been a fairly slow start for Swansea so far, but I think a few people maybe expected it to be so. Coming off the back of, you know, playing and being managed by Russell Martin to quite a different coach in Michael Duff. I reckon he should be fine throughout this season, but still a few unknowns there. Is this going to be a bit of a controversial take? I think Neil Warnock could be gone to be honest come the end of the season for Huddersfield I may even drop him into that bottom category and put my neck on the line the only thing I feel like with Warnock and Huddersfield is I mean Huddersfield fans know that Warnock isn't a long-term manager for this project and I just get the feeling that maybe at some point of the season not even Warnock getting sacked but maybe he walks away from the project if Huddersfield have identified who they want to instill as their new long-term manager at one point of the season. I think that could happen if a new manager does become available. Huddersfield say they fancy him as a new long-term coach and then Warnock just goes ahead and steps aside. Maybe I'm looking into things too much, but I don't know. At the age Warnock is now, if Huddersfield are you know, properly dragged into another relegation scrap this season, does he have it in him to work his magic once again? A lot of Warnock's best work has come as an impact manager midway through a season and based over a full campaign. I just maybe have a few doubts, but I may be left with egg on my face come the end of the season to back against Neil Warnock. Liam Rossinia in at Hull City. I think he'll still be in a job. I think that the board very much backs the project that Rossini is delivering at the moment. Been some nice football on display by Hull so far. And I think that as a team and as a coach, they're both growing together right now. And I think there is that patience within Hull that even if they don't, you know, have a massive spring forward from last season's position, progress is still being made with that squad regardless. And I think that the fancy that with Rossini right now and I think he'll still be in the job come the end of the season. John Eustace in at Birmingham. I do think he'll still be in the job come the end of the season. The only doubt I could possibly have over him that maybe would make me put into should be fine is the fact that there is that new ownership model now at Birmingham and a lot of the times when a new ownership model does come in, they want to install their own new head coach as the number one guy. But I think that Eustace has enough credit in the bank with last season and what he's already shown this season in terms of how he wants to progress this side going forward that he should be fine but the only seed of doubt I had have in the back of my head is the fact that new ownership meets a manager that's already in there how many times have we seen that story where they don't give them that much time and they want to bring in their own man but with all that being said I do think Eustace is a really good up and coming coach and I think he should be fine for this season. Randall Thomason in at Blackburn honestly he is one who I think could be gone not down to anything from the managerial front like I don't think he'll take Blackburn on a run of results where he himself will get the sack but we've already had some rumblings that came out in the summer of maybe a little bit of tension between you know a few cutbacks at Rovers with you know funds not quite being available and some frustrations on the manager's part maybe we'll see some of those tempers flare up throughout the season and whenever you get just that little bit of doubt I'm always going to chuck the manager a little bit further down this tier list because we are basing this on really slim bits of speculation right now at the start of the season. John Dal Thomason did a wonderful job at Blackburn. Just wonder whether or not some changes behind the scenes will lead to a change there in the dugout or maybe Thomason himself would even walk if he doesn't get sufficiently backed at Blackburn and another offer was to come in for him. Gary Rowett. Now, at one point, maybe I would have put him as part of the furniture. I do still think he'll be in the job at Millwall come the end of the season. I know there's tension right there. It's not been the best of starts. They've lost back-to-back -back matches. Chance coming from the away end. Um, 
that weren't too complimentary of Rower in Millwall's recent away match defeat they had at Norwich. With that being said, I think that the Millwall board has shown patience over the years that even when the manager does go on a bad run of form, he will be given the opportunity to turn things around. And as we've seen from Rower over the years at Millwall, he's just a very steady pair of hands, um, maybe unspectacular at times. I do get the frustrations at times with the style of football, but I'd be surprised if he wasn't still the Millwall manager come the end of the season. David Wagner in at Norwich. I'm going to say should be fine. I'm between could be gone and should be fine, really. It was a really bad end to last season, but he started this campaign well. The new players look to have bedded in well so far, and as long as Norwich are in and around the top six chase this season, which I do expect them to be, I think he should be fine for this season. And there is still that little bit of doubt because of that bad run of form last season and how things got away from him. With that being said, I think that the early signs this season have been promising and right now, I'd be leaning more towards he'll still be in charge come the end of the season than not. Carlos Colbran in at West Brom. One of those managers, I get the feeling, that could be gone come the end of the season. Once again, nothing to do with him as a manager. I think he's actually one of the best at this level. Just because of the uncertainty still behind the scenes at West Brom, I just get the feeling that at some point of this season, there's going to be a bit of an explosion there. Maybe it'll be the case where someone further up the championship maybe comes in for Colbran because he's got an excellent track record at this level. I just get the impression that something has to give at West Brom this season. I'm not sure he'll stick it out for the entire campaign if he's not got all the tools available to him and someone else swoops in. Oliver and Ishmael at Watford actually think he's got off to a really good start at Vicarage Road. We're starting to see the template fall in place and even in that match that Watford lost recently against Stoke, you can see what they're trying to do, put into place a consistent style of play that will carry them forward throughout the season. With all that being said, and with all the groundwork being set by Ishmael, this is Watford at the end of the day, and one bad run of form could see him snap sacked like that. I do hope that there has been a change of fortunes at the club where they will be willing to afford him that time, and even if they aren't in a playoff battle this season, he will still be given that time long term. Him. It's just a question of this being Watford, they love a managerial turnover and I expect the unexpected at Watford pretty much. So I'm going to say he'll be gone just for that reason. Nigel Pearson in at Bristol City. It's not been a great start by Pearson at Bristol City. I'm going to say should be fine. There is that little bit of doubt because they've lost a big player in Alex Scott. How do they go about replacing him? Creativity has been a real problem for this side so far this season. But as Bristol City have shown previously, even when they have gone on really bad runs, of form they have been willing to stick it out with Pearson under Pearson at Ashton Gate they have made steady progress year upon year my only doubt comes with the fact that if Bristol City aren't showing any signs of progression this season maybe Pearson could land in a little bit of trouble Ryan Lowe in at Preston did hit a real low point at one stage of last season but from that point it does seem as if Lowe has really turned things around at Preston and to be honest I don't feel as if the expectation from either the fan base or the higher ups at Preston are sky high on low right now. I don't think that he's expected to, you know, have us battling in and around the top six, top half. I think a lot of people have expected North End for a lower mid table finish. So anything above that would be an overachievement by low this season. It's been a good start so far, and I feel like he is on better terms now than he was at points of last season when he did hit that low point at Deep Dell. With all that being said, and Preston, the board have shown themselves to be really patient with managers in the past. We don't have a high managerial turnover. I think Lowe still will be in the job come the end of the season at Deepdale for that reason. Finishing off then with Daniel Farkett in at Leeds. It's not been the ideal start to the season, winless in three, but Farkas sides have taken time to grow into the season in years gone by. We've definitely seen that with his Norwich squads, which ultimately went on to win the championship. He's almost working with one hand tied behind his back right now because of the bonkers transfer window that's been the case at Ellen Road this season with late outgoings, players who are going on strike and refusing to play right now and a real lack of incomings in some crucial positions. It does feel like Leeds need to do quite a bit more in this window. I feel like there is that overall backing of Farker that he is the right man at Leeds right now but there is still that little bit of doubt that if he doesn't have them in and around the top six chase he will be 
cut short before the season ends. I'm going to go in the middle with Farker and say he should be fine. I don't feel like the expectations at Leeds are anywhere as high as they are on Maresca at Leicester, for example, where automatic promotion, I think, is the bare minimum. Don't feel like that's the same case at Leeds, but they still expect to be in that promotion chase, despite the difficulties that Farker's working with right now. So all that taken into consideration, I think he should be fine, but you never know with Leeds. But well, guys, there we have it. I will now wrap it up for today's video. Just for a little bit of fun, and do leave your comments down below. Who do you think will be the most likely candidates to be sacked come the end of the season? Let's not forget we had 18 managerial sackings in the championship last season. So, I mean, pretty much the vast majority of this board would be sacked if we're basing it on last season statistics. But other than that, though, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you did go and enjoy, make sure to leave a like, and I'll see you all in the next one.